as we enter into this Thursday morning. Let's take a moment in silence to center ourselves. To know that the presence of God is with us. To know that the love of God surrounds us. Lord of love draws to you, to be loved and loved through you. Please stand for morning prayer. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, you have made us to live in your love and you encourage us to do the impossible. Fill us with your spirit that we may dream boldly and dare to accomplish great things. Set us in families that encourage us and nourish our gifts. Lead us to friendships that inspire us to become our best selves. And in all things, help us to show forth your glory by using our talents to help others. All this we ask in your name. Amen. Please remain standing for our canticle. Let us read responsibly about family and home life. The Lord's curse is in our house of the wicked. But he blesses the home of the righteous. The wicked are overthrown and are no more. But the home of the righteous will remain steadfast. The wise person builds her house. But the foolish tears it down with their own hands. In the home of the righteous there is much treasure. But trouble befalls the income of the wicked. Evil will not depart from the house, from the home. Of the person who returns evil for good. Precious treasure remains in the home of the wise. But the fool devours his resources. By wisdom a house is built, and by understanding a home is established. By knowledge its rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. Three readings from Courage from Holy Scripture. From the book of Deuteronomy, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid or terrified. Because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. From the book of the Hebrews, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold faster to our confession for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tested in every way, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. From the book of, the, of Luke, Jesus said, what is impossible for mortals, but possible for God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for our prayers of the people. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretch out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep us this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create us in clean hearts, O God. And sustain us by your Holy Spirit. We offer you now our own prayers for ourselves and those near us.
Today, let us offer prayers for all of those who are suffering with COVID, for those who are hospitalized, for those who are in quarantine, for those who need the healing touch of God, that God would comfort them and surround them with his grace and fill them with his love. And now collecting all of our prayers and praises together as one, we are bold to pray in the words of Jesus, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. And join me in offering a blessing upon today's senior talk, senior chapel talks by Pedro Mejido and Eduardo Sacedo Moreno. <laughs> Pedro and Eddie, may wisdom guide your message and give you words to speak. May truth fill up in your mouths and your hearts be filled with peace. Up first, let us celebrate God's gifts in the life of Pedro. We all often take things for granted, and I, by all means, am no exception. It is easy to see past others' generosity and love towards us and only focus on what's in front of us. One thing most of us take for granted is family. They would always be with you no matter how bad things get. My family was there for me when they noticed I had trouble breathing and eating as a toddler. The first doctor told us I had asthma. However, none of my family members have asthma, so my parents decided to check with another clinic. The second doctor confirmed that I didn't have asthma and revealed that I couldn't hear very well either. The third doctor we visited said I lost my sense of smell and that something was clogging my ears, nose, and throat and suggested we, we see the McGovern Allergy and Asthma Clinic. The McGovern Clinic found that my symptoms were the result of many allergic reactions. A doctor, inject, a doctor injected me with several different needles, each one containing different allergens and found that I'd been allergic to dust mites, spinach, strawberries, potatoes, milk, oak pollen, and a multitude of other things that neither my parents nor I could recall, since this all happened when I was three years old. Because my body reacted to so many allergens, I had a constant buildup of fluid in my nose, ears, and throat. Since my nose was always covered, I couldn't breathe through it as a baby, so I got used to breathing through my mouth. As a result, every time I tried to eat something, I would choke on my own food. Once I received my medication, I had to be taught how to breathe through my nose and eat without suffocating myself. I had to take two injections every week and I had to get my blood checked every six months. My bed sheets also had to be continuously changed to prevent any allergic reactions. I would often be in my bed using a nebulizer every time I felt sick and missed out most of my preschool and kindergarten because of my allergies. One of my most vivid memories from this time period was of me lying in my parents' bed while breathing through a nebulizer while my mom checked up on me and bought me food. While I was in kindergarten, the school had to assign teachers to eat with me and catch me up on any lessons I have missed. My parents also had to keep a close eye on what I was eating and drinking or else I would end up with a swollen face. My parents had to keep a very close eye on everything I did and made absolutely sure I was as healthy as possible. After four years of receiving my medication, most of my symptoms were gone. However, I had to redo kindergarten because I missed out most of my education when I was sick. I don't remember much from those four years, due in part to my parents' diligence in making sure I was as healthy and comfortable as possible. Now, I, might not, I may not be the most grateful person, especially towards my family at times, but we should all try to be more appreciative of our loved ones and those close to, close to us. We tend to forget what others have done for us and only focus on the negative. Look at the good in people and remember, no matter how bad things get, 
Your family is always there for you. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let us celebrate God's gifts in the life of Eddie. Good morning, TMI. I want you to close your eyes for a moment. Think of something that has motivated you to overcome the obstacles that life puts in your way. Now with your eyes open, what you're about to hear will impact your understanding of life. When I was young, I was a kid in Mexico who had trouble fitting into social life because I lacked confidence and I was very shy. Because of that, I was rejected, rejected from a classmate's social circle. Being left out made me want to do everything I could to be like them and be accepted, but every attempt failed. What do you think the isolation and lack of friends did to me? I became an easy target for bullies. It all started in second grade and continued through my fifth grade year. I went to school every day knowing that one way or another, I would get picked on. Sometimes it was by getting laughed at in front of the whole class, and other times it was, it was by getting picked on physically. It may shock you that I did not tell my parents what was happening, but for some reason I couldn't find a proper way to tell them. Every time I would try to tell them, the words just didn't come out. As I look back at that time, I have realized that the reason I did not tell my parents was because I didn't want them to worry about me. Every day was a struggle, but I chose to pretend that my life was going great. Once my parents became aware of the truth, they made every effort to support and guide me. I had counseling for two years and took self-defense classes but it was my family's love and care that made me feel supported. As I got older, I started to learn how to forgive. Moreover, I, I knew that the bullies had damaged me physically and emotionally, yet there is one thing that they did not take away, the piece of hope that carried me through. Once I began middle school in Mexico, the bullying was soon coming to an end. My parents were much more connected and informed with the school they made sure that I hung out with the right people, which is something that I'm grateful for even today. Growing up, my family and I traveled to Texas often, especially to San Antonio, the best place to go shopping, for my mom, that is. We would come here often enough that my family got to know our neighbors so well that it was the point where I started to make new friends who, till this day, I still hang out with. In the summer before my seventh grade year, my mom and I came to San Antonio for a small vacation. We had to take a taxi to our home in the Stone Oak area. This wasn't a normal taxi ride. My mom asked the driver about boarding schools in San Antonio. He then told us about this school called TMI Episcopal, which my mom and I had never heard of before. My parents ended up visiting the school so they could check it out. They were so impressed by the school that I ended up taking a visit by myself. After my visit, that was when I realized that I had to get in. Little did I know that was the start of a new chapter in my life. However, you can love a school, but that doesn't mean it'll be easy to be admitted. When I took the admissions test, my scores did not meet the requirements of TMI. I thought that my chances of getting into TMI and living in San Antonio were over, but it wasn't like that. I went back to Mexico and started studying with two different tutors for six hours every day for four months because I was giving a second chance to take the test. This was a challenge for me because I had to keep the mindset of not giving up on my dreams for four months and also making this test my number one priority every day. After months of preparation, the test day came and I felt much more prepared this time. My parents and I drove to TMI and as soon, and, and as, soon as I arrived at the school, I walked in and took the test again. I was there for more than five hours while my parents and the director of admissions were dying of hunger. I wanted to give him my all, which meant checking every question more than twice. When my results came out, Mr. Hawkins walked up to me and handed me a TMI shirt, which meant that I had passed the test. Every minute of the process had paid off, and I had finally accomplished what I had worked so hard for. 
On her way home, I asked my dad, can I get out of the car? He responded, why? I told him that I wanted to run all the way home. He then stopped the car, opened the doors, and right, in, and right when I got out of the car, I started sprinting. While I was running, I filled myself with joy, happiness, and excitement. When my parents and I were planning my entry to TMI, we had a long talk about me having to live in San Antonio for one year by myself due to my dad having a job in Mexico City and my brothers wanting to stay along with my mom. We eventually came to the agreement that I was going to be studying at TMI for one year by myself. This was a tough year for me. I had to get used to the American school system, I had to make new friends, and even getting used to classes taught fully in English. As I started living in the dorms and school was about to start, I joined the football team. This was a big step in my life because I wanted to try something new. When I first started playing the sport, I didn't really know how to catch, run routes, learn the plays, and was even scared to hit someone. In our first game of the season, as I put on those pads and walked on the field for the first fo football game of my life, everything changed. I fell in love with the sport. Football helped me not only become a better player, but also a more self-confident person. One of the many things that football has taught me is how to handle both success and failure. In the second game of my junior season, my whole life took a turn in the wrong direction. After jumping to bat the ball down from the receiver's hands, I landed wrong and broke my left collarbone. I knew that it wasn't going to be easy to recover from this injury. When my parents took me to the hospital, the doctor told me that I was going to be out for the rest of the season. I then became depressed and frustrated because I had suffered a bad injury so early into the season and I wasn't going to be able to show what I was capable of doing on the field. I then started pushing my body to the limits to recover from this injury by training, lifting weights, and doing rehab. After months of my recovery process, I, I finally realized that my shoulder was completely healed up and I overcame the significant obstacle in my life by not giving up. During my eighth grade year, living in the dorms, I missed my family every day. But I knew one thing. If I wanted to do something better in my life, I had to take, I had to take risks. One of the lessons that I've learned is that even though you can be struggling in life, you can always try to find a way through the obstacles that life puts in your way. TMI has been more than a school for me. It has made me into a new person in all ways possible. It has, made, it has given me a place to call a second home and a place for me to be with true friends who will support me no matter what. I want to thank my parents, my grandfather, and my siblings who have been with me through the good and bad and have guided me in the right direction when times get tough. Before I end my chapel talk, I want you to know that when life gives you obstacles, you have to keep driving and pushing yourself to the limits to become the person you want to become. Just like Doc Brown said in Back to the Future, your future has been written yet. No one's has. Your future is whatever you make it, so make it a good one. Thank you. There you go, buddy. If there are any announcements, come on up while I make a couple of other announcements. I I'm not sure there are. Um, let's see, what do we got up on the, all right. Uh, if you need a picture for the Afrenda, it is still open. You can still bring your pictures of loved ones to put on the Afrenda. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, there is a D&D &D meeting, Dungeons and Dragons meeting this Friday, rifle range after school. Be there, be square. And then finally, uh, Spirit Week schedule. Tomorrow is Halloween costume day with an asterisk. The asterisk is, remember not to wear anything inappropriate offensive or gory, and above all, no scoop necks. Okay? Excellent. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, you're going to have a lot of extra time out in the amphitheater. Remember seniors and also uh, 10th and 11th graders, you can't go to uh, your next period until 1010. Everybody else goes at 1005. With that said, let us go forth to grow in wisdom, integrity, service, excellence, and reverence. All right. You, uh, you are dismissed back five rows.